A diameter tool is used for detecting the distance between two circular edges based on contrast in the image. It compares this diameter to the diameter of the master image and gives a matching weight percentage. The matching rate can be scaled to display a measurement value in millimeters. Note, this is not a measurement tool, but used for detecting between different sized parts or okay, no good parts. Let's go through an example. I'm going to use this diameter tool simulator file to walk through step-by-step -step how to set up and use the diameter tool on IB3. First, we're gonna jump into sensor settings. As you can see, I already have a master image of a circle or a large O-ring set up. So I'm going to jump to step three, my tool settings, and add a tool. Under the extra one tab, you can find the diameter tool and hit OK. You'll notice it gives me a yellow circle on my image, and this is my tool window. I can expand this circle to include the full diameter of my part, and you can see this green arrow line show up, detecting the outer diameter of my circle. If my tool window is too small and does not include a full diameter, for example, if I only include part of the circle, this tool is no longer able to detect a diameter. It must see, must see both edges or the full diameter of your part in order to detect the distance between them. If you need to add a mask, let's say if you needed to block out a portion in the middle, if there were other features that the tool may pick up on that you don't want to see, you can add a mask like so. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel in my case. And next you have this diameter extraction setting. Here you can decide between low sensitivity, mid sensitivity, or high sensitivity. In my case, I do have good contrast between my part and the background, so you can't tell a major difference between these settings. But next you can change the specified circle. Right now I am picking up the outermost circle or diameter. But if I change that to inside, now I'm picking up on the inner diameter of my ring. So depending on which one you are trying to detect, you can change that here. I'll stick with the outside and hit OK. And next you have the limit adjustment. You'll notice it by default gives me an upper limit, which means right now anything with a matching rate between 80 to 120% would be considered a good part. Anything outside of that range would be considered a bad part. And you can also adjust the scaling if needed. That covers the basic settings of the diameter tool, but let's hop into the extended functions to go over the more advanced settings. First, you have your diameter extraction setting, and you have three different options here. The first option is set diameter, meaning as the IV3 is running and seeing other targets, the IV3 will pick the circle whose diameter is closest to that of the circle specified in the master image, which would be this green outer circle in my example. If you select max, the IV3 is always going to look for the circle with the largest diameter within this window. So if I had, the same exact part, but I had another circle that was slightly larger. If I was on the max setting, it would detect the larger circle instead of the one that's currently shown. If you select minimum instead, you can see it changes to detect the circle with the smallest diameter in the tool window, starting from the center point. So in this case, that would be this inside diameter of my ring. I'm going to keep it on set diameter, looking at my outer ring and hit OK. But note that you can select that here in the extraction method. Next you have this bright dark direction and here you have a couple of options. First you have your master direction which would select edges that transition in the same direction as the master image. You can select both meaning it, it will detect circles that occur in both directions so bright to dark and also dark to bright. For example, bright to dark would only find this inner circle going from white to black. 
Whereas if I select dark to bright, it would only look at this outer circle going from the black ring to the white background. Note that this direction is going to be from the center of the tool window. So from this center, it's going to look out and once it sees a dark to bright transition or edge, which would be right here, that is the circle it's going to pick up. I'm going to keep it on the master direction. And finally, we have this scaling setting. If I go ahead and enable this setting, it can display a value in millimeters as opposed to a matching rate. Or if I know my master image circle in this case is 100 millimeters in diameter, I can go ahead and enable this setting. You'll notice my limit adjustment is 80 to 120 millimeters as opposed to a percentage. Now all the settings of my diameter tool have been set up. So I'm going to go ahead and complete my program. Now let's test out how this tool would operate on other targets. Let's go into Operation Simulation. And as you can see, I have several different targets saved in this program. As I click on each one, it will apply the tool we just set up to these targets. So for example, here you can see instead of that matching rate, because I have the scaling enabled, it is giving a millimeter value. And even though there is a smaller circle, because my extraction method was set to extract the diameter closest to the master image, it correctly detects this outside circle. As I go through these images, you can see how that diameter tool is easily able to detect the difference between these various sizes. Please note, this is not a measurement tool, but rather a tool used for detection between different parts. In my case, I have this small O-ring, I have a medium sized, and then I also have my largest, which was my master image. I hope this video helped explain how to set up and use the diameter tool on the IV3, but if you have any additional questions, please give our tech team a call at 888-KIANCE-OPTION-2-4-TECH-SUPPORT. Thanks and have a great day.